president is finally going to explain himself uh, and explain to America what is happening in Libya. It's only nine days after we launched an offensive there. I mean, I hope we don't interrupt his golf game or anything. But there, as Lucy used to be told by Desi, you got some splaining to do. I just like to know what's up. I've been saying since the trouble broke out in Egypt that there is trouble with Israel. We have been an ally for 60 years, and I believe uh, there's a chance we're no longer an ally. Of course, nobody will ever say that or confirm that. That's a dangerous conspiracy theory again. I think Israel is being set up for a fall. I believe Israel is in more danger than any time in their current world history. That's trouble. I'm sorry, but people need to understand that we don't excuse everything, any country, including us or Israel, anybody. We don't excuse and stand by them if they're wrong. But uh, when it comes to Israel, you got to be really careful because you, you don't want to be on the side that loses in the end. You know what I mean? Oh, gee, is that that Bible-thumping Christian saying all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Color me a Bible-thumping Christian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you say we start looking evil in the eye and we say, that is evil? I want to show you something. Look at the people passing out cookies. Isn't this great? Oh, look, giving it to the little old lady. That's so sweet. Until I tell you that they're passing out cookies after the brutal murder of the Fogel family in Israel. This is kind of like the dancing in the streets after 9-11. Evil. All right. Anyway, right? I mean, don't you wish all tests were that easy? Because that's, that's a pretty easy quiz there. Evil. Look it in the eye. Now, it's a little more complex in Libya, but not very much. Now, here's some new information from Sky News. We might actually be arming the Libyan rebels with U.S. weapons supply. Oh, that's good. So who are the rebels? Well, a story in the Washington Examiner says they are the same people we fought against in Iraq and Afghanistan. Here's the headline. Jihadis who fought the U.S. in Iraq and Afghanistan now enjoy American support in Libya. And when we see people that, you know, we were fighting against, I don't mean groups that were involved or people who shared associations, called them on the phone. I mean the actual people fighting against our U.S. troops in Iraq are now being protected by those same U.S. troops in Libya. Have we all gone insane? According to the article, Evidence is emerging that the United States forces are waging war in Libya on behalf of rebels whose ranks include jihadis who fought against the U.S. in Afghanistan and Iraq. Britain's Daily Telegraph reports the leader of the U.S. supported rebel forces in Libya went to Afghanistan in 2002 to fight against the foreign invasion. That's us, I'm pretty sure, who invaded Afghanistan in retaliation for September 11th attacks. The Telegraph says... A leader told the Italian newspaper that he was captured in 2002 in Pakistan. He was later handed over to the U.S. where I'm sure we cried and tried to listen about his childhood and then held him, you know, give him over to Libya where we could put him in there and make sure that he gets together with his family and has a decent meal. And gosh darn it, we're worried about him. He was released in 2008. Another report says he recruited about 25 Libyan men to fight against the U.S. forces in Iraq. Now, does that seem reasonable to anybody? Now, you might say, oh, gee, now you care about it, Mr. Beck, Mr. Smarty Pants. How come it didn't matter when you helped Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan? We trained him, and he used that training to kill Americans. It didn't seem to matter to you. Well, first of all, yes, it did, and it does. The enemy of my enemy is not my friend. That's our problem. I've been on the record saying that for quite some time. The difference is here, however, when we helped bin Laden fight against the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan, we didn't know that he would later, 15 or 20 years later, turn out to be our actual enemy and blow up the World Trade Center. In Libya, these people were our enemy first, and then we helped them. A similar analogy would be something like, um, we were helping Al-Qaeda now, after 9-11, knowing what we know now. Oh, wait a minute, that's not an analogy. That's exactly what we're doing. Mr. President, why don't you slip that one in your speech? Because you got some splaining to do. Why don't you address that with the American people tonight? I'm guessing not. A 2007 U.S. military report says this about Libyan Al-Qaeda fighters in Iraq. Quote, 
Libyan, uh, Libya contributed far more fighters per capita than any other nationality, including Saudi Arabia. Take a look at the graph there. The big one here, that's Libya. My number one concern now is our troops. First of all, gee, we're arming and protecting the people who are our enemies. How's that for morale? And beyond that, I think our enemy, I think our, I, I think our troops are in trouble, real trouble. They're being set up. Now, how does this tie into abandoning Israel? Well, I'll tell you here in a second. What we have going on in the Middle East is incredibly disturbing. I've told you about the Al-Qaeda rebels that we're now supporting in Libya. And now this, the French Prime Minister is saying that the, a Palestinian state must be created, but just by the end of the year. We also seem to be turning our backs on Israel. I think setting them up, actually. We told you last week about this global initiative. It's called the Responsibility to Protect you need to look this up. This is George Soros, Cass Sunstein's wife. This is all of them wrapped up into one. The responsibility to protect. Look it up, please. It promotes sending UN troops in to protect anybody who might be having some sort of humanitarian crisis. The world has to act. That's what we're doing in Libya. That's why they didn't consult con Congress. He just went with the UN and the responsibility to protect. Well. A lot of people would like to use that for the Palestinians against the vicious Israelis. The vicious Israelis. I have to tell you something. Has anybody noticed that the Israelis have nuclear weapons? And I'm pretty sure all of them are unused. They're so vicious. I mean, let, let, let's see this. You think if Iran had nuclear weapons, is there a single person who believes they wouldn't have used them on Israel by now? How about the Palestinians? What do you think? What do we... What are we protecting the Palestinians against? Checkpoints? People saying, hey, don't bomb us? If the Canadians were doing that to us, what? really, seriously, we just let them, you know what, come on into our malls. We're not gonna frisk you. So who is urging the protection of Palestinians from the Israelis? Well, it would have to be the UN inspector, Richard Falk. Oh, this guy's a peach, you're gonna love him. This guy, uh, this guy um, compared the Israelis to the Nazis. Uh oh, I thought that was a no-no. In 2007, Falk said, quote, it is an irresponsible overstatement to associate the treatment of the Palestinians with this criminalized Nazi record of collective atrocity. No, I think not, he said. Did Falk regret, regret that? Because it's insane and reckless. No, no. He went on later to say this. The kinds of uh, collective punishment that are uh, being imposed on the entire people of Gaza have a resemblance to collective punishment that was imposed by the uh, Nazis in, uh, in Germany. And that if this is, kind of circumstance is allowed to persist, it could produce a holocaust. Okay. For the Palestinians, Falk says, quote, protective action must be taken immediately to offset the persisting and wide-ranging violations of the fundamental human right to life. And in view of the emergency situation that is producing a humanitarian catastrophe that is unfolding day by day. Well, gee. Normally, I'd say this guy was just a clown. But no, no. That clown saying those words could trigger the Responsibility to Protect Act. Isn't it great? As much trouble as we're seeing in the Middle East, believe me, as it becomes more and more contagious and the left takes their mask off more and more and the radical Islamists become more and more emboldened, uh, you're going to see things unfold that you'd never, you never would have believed in your lifetime. Oh, believe me, it's a Sunday afternoon drive in the park listening to a Kenny G CD compared to what will happen if the Islamists are allowed to turn their wrath on Israel. According to the New York Times, quote, the Muslim Brotherhood, an Islamist group once banned by the state, is at the forefront, transformed into a tactic partner with the military government that many fear will thwart fundamental changes.
No, they fear that. I didn't hear that before. And now they're a tactic partner. America, good news, good news. It's clear to anybody who wants to see it, has eyes or hear, ears to hear it. Um, if it is clear to you, all you need to do is make sure that you're standing on the right side. Make sure that you are praying for your enemies, not yelling out in anger. Make sure that you are connecting with others. Make sure you prepare to take care of others. Make sure you are prepared to be a person with the answers. Do your own homework. Read as much as you can. The world is becoming a place that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. And the difference, I think, between plunging it into darkness and man still ret retaining freedom will be you. I know how it ends. I have faith in you. I know what happens if you become the person you were born to be, not the person you were allowed to be. Do you have that much faith in you? Well, last week we told you about Stephen Lerner, you know, SEIU, his plot to take down the U.S. economy, destroy the stock market, yada, yada, yada. Who doesn't have that plan? Well, now he's come out and brag about, you know, his plan. And, uh, oh, check it out at glenbeck.com. We found a couple of interesting things over the weekend. Do you know who trained Lerner in his great organizing skills? The same guy who mentored Cesar Chavez. That's right, Fred Ross, senior. Here he is with socialist Dolores uh, Huerta, right there. Um, also a friend of Lerner's. Lerner trained under Ross when he taught uh, workers to boycott at the United Farm Workers of America, founded by Huerta in the 1970s. So here's what you need to know. Trouble, America, and union members, it is time for you to stand up and have no fear. Decide what's important to you and what's not important to you. Is your country more important than your job? I know jobs are tough, but is your country more important? We showed you earlier uh, last week, the union workers in Detroit protesting Bank of America tries to try to force it to shut down. This isn't the first time. Tomorrow, the National People's Action, NPA, good friend of SEIU, is calling for people to flood their attorney general's office with phone calls demanding that their attorney general stand with the homeowners and not the big banks to investigate foreclosure practices. I don't think union members want to destroy America, but if you stay silent, you will have the same effect. More on this tomorrow. On tomorrow's program, a challenge, a challenge from New York. Good night, America.